Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. Uh, tomorrow I'm planning to start my series on this book, Paper Transformed. But I thought that for you, those of you who wanted to um, play along with me, I would give you a list of supplies that you're going to need for our first technique. And um, I'm also going to list these on my blog. It's uh, www.mypapercastle.blogspot.com but tomorrow we are going to do the first technique in the book and of course the first technique has to be one of the more difficult ones <laughs> so I don't know how this is going to turn out but we're going to do basic water marbling tomorrow um, I wanted to do all these techniques live with all of you but um, this one does require a bit of prep work and a little bit of experimentation because it if I don't do prep work and experiment a little, I think it's going to be a complete, total disaster. So, um, for most of the other ones though, I'm going to try and do them live. But, what you're going to need for this technique is, um, you can, I think you can use any kind of paper, but the author recommends using watercolor paper or rice paper. I don't have rice paper, so I'm going to be using watercolor paper and she also recommends using the cold press paper. Um, the watercolor paper and the rice paper are supposed to be more or be better suited to picking up the pigments um, when you're marbling. And you're also going to need a tray. This is a pretty shallow tray. The bottom is nice and flat. This etched design is etched into the back. So nice and flat on the bottom. It says glass plate or baking dish, but I think plastic's okay. If not, I'll try glass and see if it makes a difference, but I don't really think so. Um, and it, it can be very shallow. You're only going to need about a quarter to a half an inch of water in your pan. Then you're going to need some watercolors. And I have been experimenting a little um, this afternoon and I haven't gotten really good results. She did say that this watercolor paper is supposed to pick up pigments very well. Well, it's not picking up much of anything. Um, I've tried some of my tube watercolors, thinned them down, um, you know, just a little bit, and tried those. Wasn't really successful with those. Um, I tried these concentrated watercolors that I got on clearance at Michael's last year. Tried those. Wasn't very successful with those. Um, I even tried spraying some of my um, starburst stains on the surface of the water to see if that worked. And I didn't have very much success with that either. The only thing so far that I've had some good results with are um, my Distress reinkers, and um, I only have four of them. So I'm going to use these three tomorrow if these other things um, don't work again. Um, the other thing that you're going to need, and, and this was a, a weird one and I had to research this and try and find out where to get this, is um, if the pigments don't stick to your paper very well, and they're supposed to stick well to this but they're really not, um, you can treat the paper with what's called a mordant solution and that's supposed to help the pigments grab onto the paper. So um, I'm going to leave some of my watercolor paper untreated. I'm going to treat some of it with a, with a mordant solution so that you guys can see if there's a difference. I'm hoping there's a difference. Um, but I have to make this stuff and treat the paper and let it air dry so I have to do that uh, today. But it's very easy to make a mordant solution. It's basically two cups of hot water or a half a liter. And then you need two tablespoons of this. It's called alum. You can find it in your spice aisle in the grocery store. And um, it's used to make this mordant solution and also uh, is a key ingredient in making pickles. So, you know, if you guys get done making your pretty paper tomorrow, you can also go make a batch of pickles. <laughs> I just thought that was weird that this thing is used for both those types of projects. It just, they seem so far away from each other. 
But anyway, you're going to mix um, two tablespoons or 30 grams of alum into two cups or a half a liter of hot water. And then you're just going to brush one side of the paper with that solution and let it air dry. The other important thing that you need to remember is whatever side is not treated, you want to draw a big X on the back lightly with um, pencil so that you know which is the treated side and which is not. Because your treated side needs to go face down into the water. So I think that's it. Like I said, I'm going to put these um, supplies on my blog along with the recipe for the, the mordant solution. And I'm hoping I have better results tomorrow. Um, but that's it for the book. And I have a couple other real quick things I wanted to share with you guys. This was um, one of the things I got at one of the thrift stores while I was in Florida that I forgot to show all of you. I bought a bunch of ties down there, like novelty ties, because I do sell them in my store and I have pretty good luck selling them. But I found this one and I, I can't sell this one. I have to figure out how to incorporate this in a project. I mean, isn't it? It's just gorgeous. It's 100% silk. It's Oscar de la Renta. But it's just adorable. So I got that. And um, I got a few really cool books from the library that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so I'm a library freak. I'm at the library all the time. I'm always looking for craft books and new ideas and new things to try. And I found this one. It's called Alter, the, Alter This. And it's all about transforming um, books into different works of art. Um, they alter board books in here. There's um, collage ideas. There are... This one's cute. How to make an accordion book within your altered book. Um, how to make doors in your books. Colla photo collages. Um, this is a nature journal. But just a lot of really good ideas that I know a lot of you out there would love because I love to alter things. So for all you girls who like to alter things, this book has a lot of great ideas. This one just has all these little envelopes, all these little notes tucked into them. And this is one that they've made into a calendar. Travel journal collage. This one's really neat. They cut the inside out and made it into like a little game board. Or I guess that's where you store the pieces. And then the outside is the game board. Picture frames out of books. And make pop-ups. This is a nice collage, but love this book. Um, then I found another one called Handmade Paper Collage. These are gorgeous. I mean, the handmade papers are gorgeous, but then what she does with them. Oh, look at that, you guys. It's beautiful. And she even gives you um, patterns in here. Hold on, let me find one. Somewhere. See, she gives you patterns so you can make your own landscape. But they're amazing. Just beautiful. So anyway, that's that one's Handmade Paper Collage by Dawn Ackerman. Uh, this one is by Elena Hennessy, or Alina. And then this one I got because I want to start making charms and I'm not really a jewelry maker. So I found this one called Beading with Charms. And they make a lot of bracelets and stuff, not really the kind of charms that we use, but there's some really cool things in here. Like this one, look at that, all those industrial type charms, love them. And it shows you all the supplies that you need, the tools you need, you know, how to make loops, how to um, crimp beads, how to drill holes, you know, all that basic stuff. But they have a couple of really cool projects. They have this one. It's all Parisian themed charms. Love that one. And they have one in here. 
they made little charms out of felt embellishments. They put pins through the felt and made a loop at the top and made little embellishments. See, I never even thought of using these you know, to make stick pins and stuff out of, but I guess you can. And this, Nancy, are you watching? Look at this. This is a flattened penny bracelet. So you need to get your flattened pennies out of their little uh, storage holder and drill some holes in them and make a bracelet. So I thought of you as soon as I saw that. But great book for all you gals out there who love to make jewelry and charms and it's beautiful. There's that industrial one again. Love that. So that's it for me today, guys. I will see you tomorrow for our first um, endeavor into uh, the world of paper marbling. I don't know how it's going to go, but we'll see. So thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.